Hello and welcome to 18 VR games you likely missed. What's the point of playing nearly a thousand VR games if every so often you can't give a recommendation or two, eh? So, yes, I have played that many games and I think it's... I think it's something that... Uh, I think it's something that, like, it sits with me in a funny way, like, nearly a thousand. Nearly a thousand games is what I've actually played and rated and gone through all of that content. And I was thinking earlier to, today myself, should I share some of that knowledge? And I think I should. So I've uh, filtered out 18 games that I think will, uh, will have likely been missed by a majority of people. Particularly if you're new to VR and you're only just getting into it now, these are things that you might not have heard about ever had a chance to bump into someone who has played it themselves, as most of these games predate from 2016 and before. I started back in July 2014, got my DK2, and these are some games that, in that span of two or three years, when VR was still quite new, were really uh, gems. A lot of them are indies. Some of them are big name titles, but a lot of them are indies. And if you haven't taken the time to play them and you're like, what am I going to play next? Well, check out this list and let's see how we're going. So for the TLDR fans out there who like to have a little bit of a heads up before we dig into the detail, boom, there's the list behind me. You can take a quick peek at all the stuff that's on there. So you got With Loneliness, Distance, Water Bears VR, you've got Monstrum, Banishing of Ethan Carter, you've got Out of Ammo, Kronos, House of the Dying Sun, VR Vacate the Room, Home Improvisation, Kid Apocalypse, etc., etc. Let's go ahead and go through this in detail. Most of this is available on Steam. There's two Oculus home titles on this list as well. So if you're a Steam player, then there is love here for you. Let's start off with Loneliness. This odd, as they say here, athletic VR game has you moving around like the climb. In fact, I think this is essentially the naughty baby of Superhot and the climb. Um, it's a good combination of things here. Uh, in this in this game, where you've got to challenge yourself. It is hard as nails. You've got to challenge yourself to kind of beat segment by segment through this uh, through this world. And it is a very odd, uh, it is a very odd world. It, it feels like a depressed place. And as you move through, you have these quite basic hand controls, and you're moving from object to object, you're dodging incoming projectiles. Um, sometimes you're racing the clock to get past something. Uh, it is it is a, a very interesting encounter, um, and it's it's one that really it it doesn't give two flying f's about whether or not you find it difficult. It is a hard game. Uh, someone described it as as like Odd World, uh, Abe's experience, Abe's Odyssey, in that it is a difficult title. So if you're looking for something to stretch your mind, I found the various obstacle courses. I guess you could call them within the game to be really interesting. Um, I haven't beaten it myself yet, and it is something that is is, is definitely a piece of a taste of kind of extreme. Uh, there's no parkour; it's all with your hands. But hand parkour. It is an extreme hand parkour course uh, with a very lightweight kind of story behind it. I found really interesting as well. Controls can be a little bit frustrating at times, but in general, for an indie title. I think the dev has done something quite astounding here. Um, so, consider that one. Take a look at with loneliness. Next on the list is Eraser. Distance. Distance is a game that many people will have passed up and won't have seen. Uh, which is why I wanted to cover this off. Because it's like a... It's very similar to um, Trackmania. In that it's a diehard racing game. Again, you'll notice that the games I have on this list mostly have some grit to them. Uh, I am a gamer, long-time gamer, and I like games that are a bit tough. So the way this game works is you're you're racing around on these tracks. There's a series of, series of like single-player campaign-like tracks. <clears throat> you can just escalate through those. My favorite is playing multiplayer with other people, <clears throat> where you're playing with a bunch of other racers. I think it's up to eight um, on a track at once. And you're flying and you're driving, as shown in the video here. And um, there's custom races, and you can up or downvote those after you've played them. 
and then it just goes bam, 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 bam. So it's almost feeling like a procedural game, even though it's not, because you don't generally have time to learn the course. And then when you die, you reset at a checkpoint, and so you're, you're racing against others. Um, and it's, it's just a fantastic little game. So definitely one for racing fans. If you haven't tried it, I would check out Distance. Now, Water Bears is a very surprising title, I would say. It's a, it's a puzzle game, um, and it's kind of like that old, there was an old school Pipeworks um, game where you're trying to get the water flow to kind of continue all the way to the end. So it's a bit like that. Um, and this was the first VR game from Shell Games before they did I Expect You to Die. So this is kind of, I expect you to develop into a sensible young person. I don't know, it's very cutesy. You can if you want, and I did, take the little water bears and just feckin' chuck them. Um, but the actual puzzle itself uh, gets a bit more difficult towards the end. I actually ended up beating this one, um, and I thought it was a nice little taster. So if you haven't, if you're itching for more puzzle games, uh, this is one from a while ago. And as I said, if you like shell games, I'm a big fan of shell games. Their methodology, their design. Um, if you're into development yourself, you might want to check out um, their Book of Lenses, which is free on like iOS and Android, and you can it can help you with your own game design. And that's something that I found to be really interesting, a strange free giveaway, something so valuable. Uh, we've used in our own game design, myself and my wife, as we've been doing stuff like that. Next up, um, we have Monstrum. Now, nobody gets to go home alive with this one. Monstrum, you're taking a pretty terrible cruise, essentially, and... Um, on this little cruise, you're stuck with one of three horrendous creatures, and the AI director hates you. And I mean, he <laughs> hates you. So, um, you're not gonna escape alive. I've only ever escaped once on a, on a, on a duct taped, duct tape repaired life raft, um, and it was because one of the, the characters bugged out. I think I've played probably about 50 playthroughs um, of this procedural horror game. It is very intense. Um, I, I often am shrieking in this one, but it's also one of the most true horror games uh, that I, I haven't seen something this enveloping. Um, the only warning I have to give you is that it is a gamepad game. So you're not, you don't have full touch control support. Um, and there was a Monstrum 2 on Steam and you might think, oh, I'll wait out for that one. That's unfortunately not going to get VR support. So, I'm sad about that one. The Scottish-based uh, developers, Team Junkfish, confirmed that over Twitter and uh, broke my heart a little bit. Anyway, if you are looking for a proper horror game, Monstrum is a fantastic, a fantastic title. It's old, but it, it's damn good. Next up is uh, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, which is probably the first game where I sat back with a VR title that had been adapted for VR. This one, you, you, you buy the base game and then like the... VR bolt-on, which is another five quid or something like that. And if you are waiting patiently, like fingers and toes all crossed, for Resident Evil to come to PC, which it's probably not, um, Vanishing of the Ethan Carter, uh, the Vanishing of Ethan Carter is probably a good next best. Beautiful visuals, kind of a haunting arena, some puzzles in there as well as you un un undo the story. Um, but something that I found through a couple of playthroughs and, and finished this one, it's all the way to the end, um, was well worth my time. Uh, the one thing I found going back to it, however, was I got a little bit, like, simsick um, going through it, which I was surprised about. Didn't really understand why that was the case, so just buyer beware. Good old caveat emptor here. Um, it may, may, may upset your tummy a little bit moving around like like the game has you. Um, but otherwise, cool puzzles, a little bit infuriating at time. I'm not hugely a puzzle dude, but there you go. That's another one that maybe you missed. Okay, uh, next up, Out of Ammo. This game um, came out of nowhere. It really, really did. And um, it's, 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 it's a very cool concept, which is why I wanted to show it off, because Out of Ammo is, after his like hit title, uh, Daisy Dean Hall scoped out VR, I guess, and decided to create a real-time strategy game. Um, and it's a very odd one at that. It's a bit like ba Battlefield 2, when you were able to be commander mode and go down and actually fight in the battle yourself. 
most of the time when you're playing, you're in that commander mode overseeing. But when you when you want to, you can go down into one of your troops to help fight off the incoming uh, incoming AI. Um, and it means you can go behind an M16. Or better yet, go in a sniper tower and take out their lovely scopes. The thing that's amazing about this, which they were the first ones to do it, was a proper bolt-action rifle where you load the shell, chink it in, pull it back, take your shot, do it again. Really great. Really fantastic feeling. Uh, this one had a bunch of DLC afterwards actually added to it as well. So there's stuff there if you want to play. But I find it's, it's quite a frenetic battle when you're fighting. Um, and I found it to be quite fun. So... Really odd indie title, but I like as well when you take uh, development minds like someone like Dean Hall and, uh, you know, play something that's totally different from them, because uh, I think you'll appreciate it. Next up, if you were a fan of the more recent From Other Suns, which is like FTL in space and one of the best space games I've played, it's a co-op three-player from Gunfire Games, an earlier game from them is called Kronos. Now, what I've got on screen at the moment this is where I stopped playing in Kronos, and it took me 40 hours to get to this point, which isn't even the halfway point in the game. Uh, it is a 40-hour game. I played it on the most difficult setting. Don't do that. <laughs> you will die repeatedly and probably tear your hair out. The game is absolutely stunning. Um, I think it is... The reason I wanted to show it off, um, even though it is on the Oculus home platform, and hence Steam players would have to revive to get access to it. Um, Kronos is like Tomb Raider got like just totally done up in this kind of weird techno era. <clears throat> and it's just a beautiful like over the shoulder third person game. It was the first third person game that really for me proved that VR uh, could be a real truly compelling experience uh, at that, you know, in this kind of a makeup. The bosses are very hard. Um, the level design is, is is quite pretty, but because it's a time travel warp with your mind type game, you'll find you're going from one level to another level, and it's it's just kind of messing with you the whole time. You're going there and back again and there and back again. Um, but as a story title, something you can play as an adventure, there's plenty of things to kind of work your way through. Um, the game plays with scale, it plays with different senses of time, different magical things happening as well. Um, it's fantastic. I think you have to try it. But um, take my advice. Play it on an easier difficulty so you don't end up a repeatedly old dude like I was. Every time you die, you age by a year. And um, I've been on the max age ever since. So that's Kronos. Uh, definitely check that out. That's feckin' cool. And a real proper long game. One of the first, actually. Now, uh, for those of you who used to play Homeworld, a uh, real-time strategy game set in space, House of the Dying Sun brings similar vibes back. And so you have to manage a fleet. But again, similar to Out of Ammo, you can jump into that fleet into the first person and, you know, drive the ship. Say your ship gets destroyed, you can hop to another ship, and so on and so forth. You're given missions to kind of go protect a carrier, attack some enemies. Um, it's all done in space, and it's nicely colored. Unlike, you know, say, Elite Dangerous, which is pretty black at this stage. Um, so, it's exciting. Uh, again, it has a nice kind of indie flair to it. Reminded me very strongly of Homeworld. And I think it's something that a lot of people have missed. Uh, so if you're into that kind of stuff, it's a single-player game, not multiplayer, sadly, um, then that is one you should try. That's House of the Dying Sun. Okay, um, I like showcasing and supporting VR indie devs. My first ever um, Room Escape game, from what I can remember, aside from maybe I Expect You to Die, which you could kind of call that Room Escape, um, is a game called VR Vacate the Room, done by one indie dev, um, and it kind of has the look and feel of like a student project. It was the first um, VR Room Escape that that I that I played, and that touched me. Uh, you play the game; it's got some nice puzzle elements. When you escape, great ending, um, and uh, you can't want more for a couple of bucks. So VR Vacate the Room. If you're into room escapes, worth checking this one out.
as I said, simple, easy. Um, I had one of my um, one of my cousins go into this, and it was like his first time in VR, and it was really nice to kind of show him something that uh, was interactive in that way. So uh, that's a that's that's definitely an oldie, an oldie and a goodie. Now, home improvisation. Home improvisation is like if you didn't get enough of IKEA from IKEA, you can go home, strap your headset on. It's even multiplayer, uh, but you can literally you take apart these boxes and assemble janky-ass furniture, uh, which is as infuriating as it sounds, but it is quite, it feels quite uh, accomplished when you finish. So you finish, you've bolted some pieces together, and you're like, yay, and then the game lets you move on to the next bit. I don't actually recommend the multiplayer for a simple reason. Uh, people will feck with your stuff and it'll drive you insane, unless you like that kind of frustration in your life. But for me, getting the pieces together with like no instructions, you're like, okay, how does this go? And you're putting all this stuff together is fucking nuts. And you'd have to take care in decorating your house. And you look at your furniture and you go, wow, how sad is my ability, my inability to piece together these furniture bits. That's just the way it is. Now, an old favorite of mine I have to cover, oh my god, is Kid Apocalypse. I played this game in one sitting. I think it took me like nine hours, something like that, single sitting. Um, which is, I love turret defense games, and this is like an impressive turret defense game. The strategy feels fair, but difficult. I did find having to replay some levels two or three times, but there wasn't anything like truly irritating. It was a very well-stepped game, like just enough challenge for me uh, to feel like I, I could make past the level, and then the next one would be even that bit more challenging. And by the end, it is a crazy experience. There is so much in terms of waves of these little kittens. It's a cutesy game, but then again, I guess you could just shoot them in the face with lasers and all that, so maybe not as cutesy as one might think. So, um, let's move on to the VR The Diner Duo. This one is specifically geared, for me, at families. So if you have families or you know, like you're in a uh, university setup and you've got a roommate, all you need is two people. Um, one person gets to play the chef, the burger chef. They also have a cupcake mode and stuff like that from Christmas, which is really nice, actually. It's like nice bonus content that they added later for the holidays. My kids love that as well. So you you actually start off, you can do, you can do cupcakes, you can do burgers. Um, the burgers get quite complicated later on. And if you've got a spouse, you're probably going to end up shouting at each other. And like, no, I didn't say a number seven. I said a number two. Um, and it's just great. It's absolutely fantastic. Out of all the games, all the VR games there are, this is my number one favorite with my kids to play. Um, it's lighthearted. They can have lots of fun. The game allows you to kind of just chuck burgers around if you want, you know. Um, so there's a little bit of kind of horseplay in there as well. And then the PC player gets to be the server. And the server, as shown here, walks around, serves drinks, gives some nibbles, waits for the burger, calls out orders, and that's how the teamwork happens. But it is just fantastic. Really solid game. Um, I still feel bad because uh, Dev Kev, who made it, uh, I remember I, I, I gave the game a, bit, a big kick in uh, the first night I, I went into it. And then afterwards, I was like, damn, this game is freaking awesome. It is great. So that's a fantastic co-op game if you really are looking for one. Now, if you're a racing fan like me, as you can see from uh, <coughs> my clothing, I, I do kind of like that whole racing side. I like speed. I like fast-paced games. Um, the first, like, proper fast-paced VR implementation that I've played, and that is really fun in multiplayer, uh, but the single-player campaign is feckin' deep, like, proper deep, um, is Red Out. And the thing that I have to say as a music lover is that this is a game that, for me, the soundtrack is half of the experience just by itself. The handling of the vehicles is great. Gave me a kind of real F-Zero vibe. Um, and and then, you know, the, op the OST, the actual soundtrack, for me is on par with like Hotline Miami or Doom. Just really punching soundtrack. And the DLC that they have for the game as well is like really neat. Um, I, I just really, really appreciated... Um, being able to being able to uh, race on on very different worlds, like from a desert world, underwater. My favorite of all time is probably I think it's a Martian one where you're going down a volcano, like into the mouth of the volcano, and that is 
amazing. That's like really awesome. There's a thundering soundtrack with it. You got the other racers coming right on your tail. And it's just a nice kind of simplified version of a racing title. So a real pure racer. Not quite a sim racer, of course, but feels um, a bit like a pod racer, actually. If you like the kind of Star Wars pod racer game, this is amazing for that. It really gives you that feeling. Um, and so if you really enjoyed that back on, I think it was the N64, um, back when episode one came out, got all those years ago, then uh, this is one that would definitely please Jar Jar Banks, you know. So that's Red Out. That's one you've got to try as well if you are into racing games. Next, a hidden gem that feels double A in its manufacturing is the Assembly. Now, the Assembly is a two person story with an intermix between those two person roles um those two people's roles it is visually stunning really solid looking game i mean this is on par with like arizona sunshine and maybe even a bit better than that so this story from end dreams for me gave me very much like half-life vibes but even a little bit more depressing i suppose the the um the world around it, the stories that you have between the woman and the male character who, who run very, very different pieces of the story. Um, I found great. Uh, there's, there's, there's some very interesting storytelling elements throughout this. Uh, and there are like micro games as you go through in addition to the overarching kind of adventure. So um, it, it feels great uh, to play. I think many people missed the assembly. Um, and it, it, it guts me a little bit because it's a fantastic piece of storytelling. And if you haven't tried it, um, again, take my recommendation, uh, give it a play. Uh, that's the assembly. So uh, if you really want to kind of bust your noggin open and, you know, really get yourself thinking, holy shit, then Google Earth VR. If you didn't know this was a thing, you can literally get the entire world into your VR headset. I mean, when this came out, it was like, whoa! Like, <laughs> you're like, you like go from outside Earth, right? And you just like pull the planet toward you and you zoom down and right into a city, you get all the architecture, all the design. I remember I went to, I think, Niagara Falls, which I've never been to in real life. And I looked around it and I was like, holy cow, fucking hell. It was just so detailed. Um, I mean, the buildings and stuff aren't perfect, but um, a lot of the architecture is there in the major cities. And um, I was able to check out the place I, all the places I had lived in my life, Alaska and the Caribbean and various places in the US and the places I'd visited before. And then I could even walk into shops in Japan because the interior in some buildings is mapped. So you could do that. And I could walk into my school that I went to in Ireland and Cork. Um, so it was really interesting to kind of see that. So if you haven't tried and played around with Google Earth VR, be prepared to lose like an hour or two on first sitting. It's just, it's that kind of way. So let's move on to an Insomniac Games title. One that is about, it's gonna get you two and a half hours of gameplay, but great story and something really cool. So this one is Edge of Nowhere. Uh, this is one, not to make another Tomb Raider reference, but if you imagine Tomb Raider got lost in Antarctica, that gives you the flair of the game. This is another game where, like Kronos, it's in the third-person perspective. It is a coincidence that I've picked two kind of adventure titles um, on Oculus Home. Uh, this is another Oculus Home title. Definitely worth, um, uh, definitely worth uh, doing, uh, doing uh, no matter what headset you, you have quite eerie dark uh, arctic uh, there's some alien side to it bit of a weird mysterious game um and runs a little bit like a david lynch film in my opinion in certain places really kind of eerie twisted a lot like uh, an early rendition of let's say hellblade um, maybe with a slightly different setting definitely one that kind of challenges your psyche in terms of what you're doing i have to give this one a huge recommendation because it's just a, it's a great story, and it's probably one of the closest to the third-person character that you get in a third-person title. So Edge of Nowhere is definitely one you want to try. It's uh, It's got some pretty, <laughs> as you see there, some pretty nasty bad guys in it. Um, two more titles. Now this one is one that with the new seasons of, with the new seasons of Mr. Robot, um, 
Darknet always... I always get the itch to play Darknet again. Darknet is the first game that I've really felt um, empowered to be uh, a cyber hacker. You know, it's like I'm going to go in to the web and I'm going to go at it. And the way they design the puzzles and the hacking and the virus spreading and um, the, the kind of sense of, okay, I'm on a timer, but it's kind of chill at the same time. Um, and then at the end, you're like racing the clock sometimes trying to go secure that Bitcoin. Uh, fantastic. Now you might think this game looks like a flat game. This game this is a game you play on iOS. No, the way it wraps around you is bloody amazing. So E. McNeil did a fantastic job with Darknet and it's something that I, I recommend to people when they ask me like, what's your favorite uh, kind of puzzle type title? Darknet is absolutely one of them. So check it out. Very good, uh, very good immersive flavor. It's also available on some other titles, things like Oculus Go. Um, I think it's now available on Oculus Quest via the Go to Quest bridge as well. So do maybe check this out. I know I've said that against every single title so far. Check it out. That's the whole point of the list is to check these 18 games out or at least some of them. Now, finally, Freebie this is the only game on the list that's free. Gnomes and Goblins. Um, it is an absolutely cool uh, game. It's like probably one of the first games that Karen and I, my wife, we felt really brought storytelling closer in VR. And it just represented these um, creatures, these characters, in such an adorable fashion. You're like, wow, the VR filmography is going to go places with this. So free demo, still available. Um, I saw index support is on there if you've got an index. So check it out. It's got these like cutesy little goblin creatures and um, you can interact with them. Um, but it, it does it in such a, a way, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it does it in such a way that you're like grinning ear to ear by the end of the thing. And you're like, God damn, give me this game. Um, absolutely, by the by the end of it. So this is just a, this is a demo that released some years ago. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. So go check that out on Steam. So those are my... Um, 18 titles picked from a list of a, nearing a thousand. Um, I've just kind of taken us right up to like 2017. If you enjoyed this and you found this to be really helpful as a kind of a highlight on games that I think you should try and check out things that maybe you haven't considered before, um, let me know and I'll consider doing more, maybe for a near, a kind of a closer period or even on some specific themes, you know. I'm not going to do like a top five or top ten necessarily, but just when I see that there's a set of a subset of, of excellent things that you may have missed, I feel like kind of a requirement on me, having played all those games uh, those year, over those years, um, to kind of bring that news to you. But if you want something that you can work with directly, I actually have a long list as shown behind me here um, at reviews.zimtalk5.com. You can filter this shared Google spreadsheet and just go through nearly a thousand games. Um, and you know, you can just filter on buy, consider avoids. So you can say, just, just show me the buy titles, show me things with, with really intense gameplay or something with, uh, for instance, something that I do that I don't know anyone else does, uh, tactile. So if you've got a, a shaker of any kind, any kind of shaker setup, then I have things rubber stamped for shaker support, uh, in this list as well that you might find interesting. So that was uh, that was uh, 18 VR games. That was 18 VR games that we uh, were able to kind of just quickly cut through. And um, I hope you do take some time to check them out. If you do and you like something, let me know. I always like hearing people's impressions. And even if you don't like it, like you're like, I tried with loneliness, but God damn, that's too hard for me. Uh, I'd be curious to hear it as well. Um, so thank you very much for your attention on this. Um, I best be getting back to some live streams. Cheers. Thanks, everybody.